So this article that you had me look at, Brian, from U.S. News, tax planning for high net worth individuals. It talks about uh, high net worth individuals typically have between $1 million and $5 million in liquid assets. Financial advisors can provide great value to these clients by being proactive and helping them take advantage of opportunities. Uh, and it lists out some of the opportunities. Let me read them to you and you tell me what your thoughts are about them, all right? Maxing out retirement accounts. Your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, it depends on the situation, but not always is the best thing. I mean, it depends what their income is, if they have a, a absorbent amount of income. Um, and it depends how much they have. And they, if they have a Roth option, then maybe. But if they don't, then just do the match and move on and invest. in. There's a lot of other things you can invest in. What is a backdoor Roth IRA? What's backdoor? What's that mean? Yeah, so the backdoor Roth is it's not a it's not going to change the game, right? It's for someone that has high income they they can't contribute. If you're that must be why I don't know about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So if you make over two hundred, basically married, filing jointly, um, it's it's approximately that. the number changes every year, but you can't put in a individual Roth. So you have uh, you can do a regular. IRA and then you instantly convert it and that's what's called a backdoor Roth but it's only I mean for people over 50 it's only uh seven thousand dollars right you know somebody saving seven thousand dollars a year is not worth doing uh it is but the the problem is you have to if you have it some people a lot of people go through this I had a, a doctor that was going through all this work and he was he was doing all this work with you know because it's it's a headache because you got a 1099 R from from your custodian because you converted it you made it taxable Right. And um, <laughs> it was like all this all this extra work with accounting and taxes. And then I said, well, why aren't, why don't you just put in your Roth 401k? He's like, uh, I don't think my company offers. I'm like, yeah, no, we've got about three clients that are at least three or four that are at your hospital. So I know they offer you could put in twenty seven thousand oh, wow. dollars. Yeah. You don't you don't need to do all this. Yeah. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah. So the problem is with a backdoor Roth, if you have a traditional IRA, it's it's a pro rata rule, and you got to be real careful because you're converting. You have to convert all of it, and a lot of people. I had a guy came in once, and he had a couple hundred thousand in IRA, and he's like, "I'm doing the backdoor Roth," and I'm like, "You're doing it wrong," because you have an existing IRA, and it's it's just confusing. Yeah. I, I I'd say you need to get a professional if you know you're, if you're going to do that, but it's not going to move the needle that much because it's not that much money. What is tax loss harvesting? Well, you got to have money outside of an IRA, right? You have uh, invested in um, typically it would be stocks or, or um, ETFs if you had enough of them. Um, and then you basically sell the losers. Let's say you got uh, 100 stocks in your portfolio, right? Even in a good year when the market's up 20%, you're going to have some losers. Sure. It's just the way it is, right? I was just looking at Johnson and Johnson um, this year. I think they were down twelve percent or something for the year just a few days ago. I don't know what it is now, right? But um, well, the, the S and P's up. Why are they down, right? Well, there's a lot of reasons, right? We go into that, but so you basically sell utilize those the, losses, the losers, right, and offset the, the winners, the winners, gotcha. and so you have a wash going on, right, or close to it, um, and and that way you can still generate tax-free income i got you right and and then buy back the stock that you want to keep and you have a higher cost basis so next time that you sell it you don't pay as much tax that made sense right yeah absolutely absolutely how about contributing to a health savings account that's Good. an hsa yeah hsas are easy a lot of people are like, i don't understand them well it's tax-free going in it's tax-free going out if you use it for health and medical expenses that's pretty simple and uh, you know pre-tax it's it's triple tax benefit pre-tax going in tax deferred Tax-free distributions for health, medical expense, uh, and and what I notice is a lot of my clients get, you know, have more medical bills in retirement. Me Medicare doesn't pick everything up. Yeah, right. And Isn't it like seven thousand a year, or five thousand a year, or something? Uh, I don't, I don't know if what the exact. What do you mean the expense? HSA. No, the what, oh, what, what you, you contribute? Can yeah. Um, I think this year it's up to like eighty-two hundred okay. for, for someone that's over fifty-five with the catch-up, which most of our clients. Which are isn't me. I'm not there yet. You're close. No, you're, I'm you're, not. You're kidding there. No, I'm not. Well, I'm was, 53. Is it next week? No. Oh, cool. Shame on you. 
Hmm. Uh, how about contributing to a 529 plan? Eh, that's not really going to do that much. I mean, the, 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 you get a state tax deduction in Virginia. Um, I'm not a huge fan of 529. Is that the education thing? Yeah. Okay. You know, but now, education. now you can Future use it education. for, for uh, secondary school, high school, for like private education. Okay. Um, yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's, the, the benefit is that it's ta- it's kind of like a Roth for college. Right, because it's not you don't get a tax deduction on the federal side, um, and the most that you can get, I think, I was th- I was considered funding, and I looked into the sa- I think I was, would save two hundred eighty dollars or something a year. Mm. Like it's not worth all the yeah. effort of setting the account up and everything. The but the growth works. is tax free, right? So if you invested in when your child was, you know, one or was born, and you did it a little every year, and you you invested and you put. Fifty thousand and it grew to one hundred and fifty, and and then use it for college. Well, that hundred thousand dollars could be used for, you know, it would be tax free. The problem is, you know, you have one kid, and they don't go to school, and you decide to you, you now you can gift it away to somebody else, a niece, a nephew, or a family member. You can't take it out. Oh, you can ten percent penalty plus uh, the ordinary t- income tax. tax. Yeah. So if you're a big t- tax earner, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, an income earner, you're going to pay 50 percent on the earnings. And I'm like, it's just not that. I, it's I, kind of like going up to the gas station and going, how much will my truck hold? I'm going to give them 50, but it may take 62. And right. And then you don't, yeah. It's just, you're just pigeoning all your stuff. Yeah. How about charitable gifting strategies? I hear you talk about that a lot. Well, because a lot of our, our clients are giving. They, they've felt blessed to have the assets they have. Um, obviously, they worked you know, hard for them, so they, they deserve to earn it. But... They're like, well, you don't need all this, you know. Let's let's figure out a charitable giving strategy. You, you mentioned a charitable lead trust, Brian. What is that? How does that work? Is that a fit for me? Yeah, I mean, you're giving forty thousand dollars a year away. Um, if you're not looking at charitable giving strategies and you have a financial advisor, you're probably overpaying. You probably have outgrown your financial advisor. Your CPA doesn't understand them. We had one of the biggest CPA firms in town talk about, you know, totally misconstrue what a, a charitable trust this type of trust was it was a charitable lead annuity trust which is it's it's literally just a way to get the tax deduction up in a year that they need it right we had a client that was selling land and they were doing taxes through them we just met him and i had to introduce like he's gonna pay uh eighty thousand dollars in capital gains this year so here's a way he's a charitable giver they give to their church they give to this nonprofit. they give their agape they do all these wonderful things financially and he's not going to stop just because he's retired. He's going to continue to give. So we're not changing his cash flow, and he's going to offset a huge portion of tax here. And it was like, well, he's all the money's going to go to the, the the church at the end. He's got kids. I'm like, no, that's not how it works. So you need to find some. If your charitable giving strategies can be great for people that are giving. If you want to just all of a sudden give to get a tax deduction, that's not how it works. You're not there's not a dollar for dollar return. Find out which of these strategies is right for you. Call Integrity Financial Planning today, 866-2PLAN-4, 866-TO-PLAN, and the number 4.